Good morning, everyone in Malaysia. This is Matthias Chang from Future Fast Forward again. Today, my address concerns what's happening in the US and its impact on Malaysia. I'm both happy and sad as to the events unfolding miles away across the ocean and its impact on Malaysia as well as Southeast Asia. And I have read extensively articles, videos, speeches, what have you, for the last few months leading to the November 8th election. And I think also some of you have received my WhatsApp messages way before the November 8th election that as a result of my analysis and my objective conclusion, I have concluded that Trump will win the election, hands down, by a landslide against all pundits throughout the world against all official polls throughout the world. And I feel that I was a minority as it was surveyed that 85% of Malaysians supported the Clinton, the Hillary Clinton bid to be the 45th President of the United States of America. My analysis was not a knee-jerk reaction because I have through my emails to my friends overseas in Europe and America for the last few months. I've shared my research, my data and my analysis with them. And way, way back, I have forecasted based on data and analysis why the polls were wrong and why Donald Trump will triumph. And more importantly, to strengthen my confidence that this will happen. Two, three, two or three days before November 8th, I sent out a WhatsApp message to my friends as a gift in return to them, those friends who have donated monies to the campaign in support of the struggle against corruption. And by that message, I hope that they would reclaim back the monies they've expended in the struggle against the regime. And that message, which I asked them to verify, is that the entire global financial elite has prized and took trades, future trades, that Clinton will win the election. And I warned and I advise that trick was wrong. And that if Trump wins, something will happen within two to three hours of the announcement. Meaning, the market will collapse, will gyrate, and that people should take the opposite trade and make a whole lot of money. And as before throughout my career, when I give advice such as this, I do not trade so as to not be in a conflict of interest and that my advice is unbiased or prejudiced to make money. And that has come true. And I credit that advice to my good friend overseas. Now having said that, a lot of people, although they are a minority, have wrote to me making spurious allegations, unfounded allegations against Donald Trump and painted a picture that Hillary Clinton was a candidate and a president to be that would benefit Malaysia and the struggles of the opposition movement against the regime. I will show to you in due course how infantile, how myopic, 
and how baseless is the analysis. And in the course of the last few weeks prior to the November 8th election, I posted to my website under the left hand column of my website, must watch videos, three or four videos by a top spy master in the United States of America, warning his own people that there was a silent coup by the Clinton Obama missionary and a counter coup by the faction within the military, the intelligence services, to stop the soft coup of the Clinton-Obama missionary. And he explained that normally coup is very violent by the military. But he stated that there was a soft coup. And you recall a few months ago, when I advised and commented on the National Security Act passed in August by Najib and Amno. I warned everyone way back in August that constitute the final foundation stone or the nail for the silent civilian coup in Malaysia to capture total power and prolong the regime's rule in Malaysia. It was very telling that this person, Steve Pesadek, told the whole country that we cannot use a military coup against Clinton because that would destroy the Republic. That what is going on since the one year ago amounted to the second American Revolution. The first being the revolution by the Americans against the British colonial power. But this time, he said, this revolution will not be military, but will be a soft counter coup using technology via the internet, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, or what have you. So as to use the power of communication to present people and to open the eyes of the people to the reality taking place in America for which American citizens themselves know what is going on but through the world global mass media and the global banks we are given the impression that under the Obama administration and if Clinton were to continue the third term of Obama, if she was become a president, everything was rosy, the economy is recovering, and there will be future fantastic growth for America and for Asia via TPP. And we jump on that bandwagon and bury our head in the sand and assume that what was told the misinformation, the propaganda by the mainstream media of the fashion elites are true. So, before I continue, I want you now to press the pause button of your video and read this notice carefully. Learn reality, not delusions. Go to the website www.stiff Pizanik.com and watch all the videos. Most of the videos by him have been uploaded to my website. Now, watching the video, I'm not asking you to agree with this politics, but study the facts disclosed by him, read between the lines, understand the nuances and then draw your conclusions and apply the lessons learned and proven right by this man who said that Clinton will not win. The counter-coup will prevent 
the criminal syndicate of the Obama Clinton machinery must be stopped. So we will be very naive and idiotic to ignore the disclosed facts of this video. Now, in my website, I put up his videos as follows. The first video you must watch in my website is Internal Coup by Clinton has begun. Watch that first. Two, Intel officer Steve Pixenik talks Hillary Coup. Third, the Hillary takeover of the United States. And fourth, the Clinton pedophilia connection. These are the four videos which I put in my website. Others are, are in his website. So I hope you will watch this very carefully and learn. Because if you fail to do so, let me say, all the struggles by the good people of Malaysia against the corruption, the criminality and the regime will fail. Because you chose, or the powers that be on the opposition side have chosen to ignore reality and what is going on in America. Because let me tell you, what happens in England, in America, will have an impact on Malaysia. So if we condemn the corruption, the criminality of the regime and of the cabal, we cannot therefore support Hillary Clinton or Obama because their corruption, the criminality, is so extensive that a faction of intelligence services, the military, and leaders of both parties have decided to come together to have a counter coup, to expose the criminality. The videos by Steve Pesanek shows that not only was there money laundering by the Clinton Foundation, the world's largest money laundering operation, but there was vulgar, degrading crimes committed by this syndicate, pedophilia. Pedophilia means the abuse of young children, boys and girls for sexual gratification. And Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Huma Abedin were part of that trash. Evidence came out that they took part and flew in the Lolita Express, the plane owned by the jail convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, flying there from America to an island bungalow in Caribbean to indulge in child abuse. And we want such a person to be the President of the United States. We want to support such a vile criminal. Those who support her, I would definitely beg you to reconsider the basis for their support. Because if you do so, you are practicing double standard. And may God stop you in your tracks. Because we are not, the country will not be allowed, and I'll fight it to prevent the country from jumping from the frying pan to the fire. No way. We fight on principles, not on cheap compromise. Two wrongs don't make one right. Now, I understand very clearly that many Muslims 
are very happy supporting the Clinton campaign as well as the Obama presidency. Let me put it very clearly now to one of all of you with, in no uncertain terms and the most blunt message. Obama is a false Muslim. He's Bush Jr. on steroids. And under his watch, both Obama president and Hillary, when she was Secretary of State, has killed more Muslims by their bloody hands than any other leaders. Benghazi in Libya murdered brutally the Libyan leader, Gaddafi, and said in a CNN interview, we came, we saw, he died and laughed. When Libya was the richest country in Africa, richest, peaceful, and then with the Wahhabis, deviants, deviants, radicals, criminals, financed by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, trained in Israel and Jordan and Turkey and Qatar, sent to Syria and slaughtered fellow Muslims. Documents have come before the world in congressional hearing. Al-Qaeda affiliate al Nusra is part of the ISIS network. And yet, you see, Muslims wake up. September 11 took place and they blamed Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden as the enemy, the enemy, the terrorists. Yet today, Obama and Hillary Clinton says that they are allies for regime change in Syria and Iraq. Muslims have been slaughtered. If you want, I may just put up those videos where they slaughtered Muslims like cattle in a slaughterhouse. Slash their throat drain their blood, and then hang on hooks on auto chain. Drown men, women, and children in cages and burn them alive. And these people are the mercenaries, the armed instrument of a foreign policy of Obama and Hillary Clinton for the entire Middle East. But he's not condemned. This false Muslim. She's not condemned. This bitch, criminal bitch. But Trump is condemned as a chauvinist, racist, white supremacist. What have you? How stupid. And some leaders of the Muslim Ummah went on to say and finance they clean the machinery because they have this weird and warped sense of control. They say we must be like the Jews, the Israelis who control APAC, AIPAC in America, the most powerful Jewish lobby that finance and control the American government, so to speak. So likewise, we must have a similar organization and agents in America so that we or rather, the Muslims of the world can control the U.S. government. And Huma Abedin and his network were at the seat of power. So that if Hillary Clinton becomes president, Huma Abedin will be the chief of staff. Oh my God, we Muslims will have the front seat in the White House and we control world power. That was the conclusion. Whatever sacrifice in Syria Libya is irrelevant. A price to be paid for control of the White House. That is an infantile, naive conclusion. Why? Because it premises on the point, on the basis that as if the NSA, the CIA, the DIA, 
and all the other agencies are not aware that Huma Abedin, her parents, and all the other NGOs that was allowed to establish itself in America have not been penetrated or monitored by the agencies. They have no counter-program to turn them and plant double agents to give false information back to the Vahibis. Can we be so naive, can the Muslims be so naive that they could have captured control of White House without the NSA knowing? Ask any AMNO leaders who have intentional experiences. Why would sometimes an intentional services would drag on for so long? Because they want to see how extensive is the network and how much the rot has gone to the very top. Therefore, did it really come as a surprise that Steve, Dr. Steve, Pesanik, a top spy master, waited to the 11th hour, 10 days before the election, to announce the counter coup. And caught everyone by surprise. Because by then, this faction knew the extent of that infiltration by these elements, or hybrid elements, and he put a stop to it, and to prevent a world war. On the day, on the eve of the election, 300,000 NATO troops were dispatched to the eastern part of Europe, ready to have a war with Russia. Weeks before that, hawks of the war party was provoking a third world war with Russia. But Donald Trump and this particular master spy said, we will not have a third world war. Putin has warned about third world war and said that if Clinton were to win the presidency, there would be a third world war. And yet, Malaysians, for some reason, Bury the head in the sand and says, Clinton is our savior. Now let's pause here for a while. I'm going to share with you something and for you to contemplate. Maybe it's because DOJ on the 20th of July announced the complaint against Najib for the word MDB, the largest kleptocracy investigation and spill up all the beans to the benefit of Malaysians. Now pause and ask why? Why was that done? After the TPP was signed by Malaysia. Let's be honest. Every country indulged in dual political warfare and games for survival. There are two rival powers competing in this part of the world, USA and China. For years and years and years, our foreign policy regarding Southeast Asia has been always neutrality and to make Malaysia and its neighbours, ASEAN region, a zone of peace and neutrality so far. The idea was, I believe, I said to be created, created by Tun Raza. We do not want to be pawns in the war games of USA or China. We will be friends to all and enemies to none. Live in peace and trade with all. But I would say someone in Malaysia wanted to play the game one against the other and sought protection for himself and his cabal. In return, he will shift to one side or the other. So analyze, why did Obama, who played golf and was a so-called good terms with Najib, all of a sudden 
Let loose the old Jacob play. Now, Nadim says we must allow foreign countries to interfere in Malaysia. Hmm? But he going to America, playing golf, and what have you behind the scenes, what does that amount to? Is that seeking foreign assistance somewhat? And then when he was dumped by Obama and Clinton, he ran off to China. And when in China he said, America mistreated him and Malaysia and tried to control Malaysia, all right, and suffered our sovereignty. Oh, running to China, prostituting and prostrating to China is not subverting our sovereignty. Selling our crown jewels at inflated prices is not subverting our sovereignty. Think about it. That needs no explanation. If it is explanation, then those people who are policy makers, policy shakers on both sides of the divide, if you need a further explanation, you're not fit to lead or to conduct policy in this country. Because, because it reflects the shallow thinking that you all have. But I believe there are enough rational people in Malaysia to know the danger which this country has been exposed to as a result of this geopolitical hanky-panky by some leaders playing US against China, hoping that he will survive. If one can't get protection, the other will. And seeing there's no price to be paid, you can get free lunches from the superpowers. You must be mad. You must be mad. And then, coming back to the election, some say, you know, it's the white people that support Trump and not Clinton. How infantile, how shallow is the analysis? The majority of the Americans are white European stock with minorities, Afro-Americans, Latinos, Mexicanas, Chinese, Vietnamese, Koreans, and you name it. But the bulk is European stock, white. But they forgot, how conveniently forgot There were five states in the 2012 election, Obama, Florida, Ohio, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Pennsylvania was captured by Obama and the Democratic Party in 2012. These are the key states which you must win to win the election. And Obama won those five states. Huh? But in this election, Trump took it back. So, what have these Christians to say? See, they don't do the research. They shoot off the hip and make superficial analysis. Do you know that Ohio is a state that is a microcosm of the population of America? And since 1964, Whoever lost Ohio never became a president. No contender who lost Ohio became a president. Because that was the microcosm of the United States of Malaysia, uh, of America. Florida is the most mixed racial state in whole America. Mixed. Black, Latino, you name it, all that. Obama what? Trump won there as well. Took back Florida from Obama to what to. Likewise, the other states, North Carolina, Arizona, the key states, they swung to Obama. And supposedly was the stronghold of the Clinton. And now they swung back to Trump. You see, when they swing back to Trump, 
Trump is now labeled as the supremacist or the white votes. But when they were before supporting Clinton, oh, it's okay. Clinton is not a supremacist. It's not relying on white votes. Oh my God. Are you saying that Clinton relied on the black votes, the Latinos, or what have you, can win the election? Give me a break. Give me a break. So, let's stop here for a while and pause and ask ourselves, what lessons can we learn from this campaign? Some say we need Soros money, Zionist money, because of philanthropy, not as a guise to control the country. Trump, a businessman with no experience as a politician, never conducted a campaign in his life, took on his own party who was against him. When he announced that uh, he's going to stand for the primary election as the party nominee, everybody laughed at him as if he's a nickel poop, ignorant shallow. He fought against 17 Republican contenders and he won. Oh, that's fluke, uh, that's fluke. The whole party went against him, sabotaged him. And then when he became the nominee for the Republican Party at the convention, top leaders boycott him and backstab him. I want to destroy him. And they say he's an aberration to US politics and democracy. This is what Nuru said, you know, somewhere. I'll come to that later. Huh? The party elected him. Namaskal, that is democracy. He won the election, the nomination from 70 other experienced governors, senators, and congressmen. Overwhelming majority. And when he challenged Clinton, every government in Europe and most of the world and the entire global financial elites went after him. The entire mass media went after him. Hey, numbskulls, what do you have to say to that? Why is the whole world, all Western governments, G7 governments, every hedge fund, every bank, global bank banks went after Trump? Every mass media went after Trump. And you say we cannot trust mass media, they all bloody, you know, propaganda machine. They, they rigged false polls against him and said he would lose. That Clinton was leading by 30%, 20%, what happened? Why are they so afraid of Clinton, a man without experience? And he won and whacked them all, whacked them. Could he have done so alone? Could he have done so alone? Could he be so stupid? Huh? If he's not a strategist, if he's not a brilliant mind, to know Clinton's spent over a billion of dirty money, dirty money, corrupt money, to finance his, her campaign. Donald Trump spent 100 million of his own money and small donors from all re work, working people and beat a multi-billion dollar campaign of a Zionist pact, Hillary Clinton. The bulk of the Jewish money, Zionist money, that controls all the media, all the banks, were aligned behind Clinton. And you Muslims in this country say, we must oppose Israel. We must oppose Zionism. And yet when Zionist money is behind Clinton, you condemn Trump as a chauvinist? You are in fact a closet chauvinist because you refuse to see the truth and because you thought that Clinton and Obama having allowed DOJ 
to file criminal proceedings, they must be on your side. Now, let me tell you something. I bet you if Clinton were to win the election, and Clinton wants Najib and Amno to turn their back on China and come back to US and make an offer, okay? Assuming that in return, from turning it back on China and be within the orbit of the US again, we will drop all charges, stop all investigation. What do you think will be the choice made by the regime? Ask yourself that. And I suppose you have not even considered that possibility, isn't it? And that possibility was on the plate. Ignorance. Don't even know the danger that was facing our country. And yet, Trump said what? In his first 100 days, he will work with Russia to stop the killings of ISIS in Syria, stop the wars in the Middle East, to promote peace, so that there were no more Muslims killing Muslims. And that America should now focus on the principle and policy, America first, restructure a broken economy on the verge of bankruptcy, 21 trillion in debt, rebuild the country, have a more humble, more inward-looking foreign policy. In accordance with the farewell speech of the first president of the United States of America, George Washington. Do your research, read a speech, if you haven't read it yet, and don't call yourself a leader in politics, if you don't have this background, and make spurious, hasty, infantile conclusions about an incoming president, how dare you rush to judgment? Why do you rush to judgment and condemn Obama? Hmm? Eight years of destruction, a kill list. He elevated himself the power and the right to kill anyone in the world based on the names in his list. For he was choose to be killed by special force or by drones. That is okay by you, right? Has Trump killed anyone? Has Trump killed anyone? Oh yes, he used some lewd words. He demeaned the women. Hey, you scumbag women, critics. Bill Clinton raped, molested, abused women. Okay? He was impeached in Congress. And by virtue, because the Democrats had the votes, he got away by whisker. But he paid up 800000 to Paula Jones, for whom he raped. He even raped a young girl, 13 years old. Rape! And you watch the video of Steve Pesnik. The title being The Clinton Pedophilia Connection. Hillary is a bisexual, a lesbian, and brought young girls to the island for child abuse. Are you, are you accuse Trump as a chauvinist? Anti-women? When this couple has done more harm to women and give projection to his poor women. All the victims of rape by Bill Clinton told in official press statements that Hillary threatened them if they continue to disclose the crimes of Bill, they will pay a price. Watch those videos. If you tell me this woman fights for the right of the women of the world, you must be joking. Sorry, no rule. I thought you had some intelligence. But your original statement in the press, you have shown to be very shallow. And I pity you. And I pity you. 
because I thought it could be of some potential in the coming political arguments. But instead, by your stand, by your baseless, superficial critique of Trump, you show you lack discipline, intellectual honesty, and is motivated by emotions and bias. I hope after this video speech, you have the humility to re-examine yourself, learn, improve, and be an asset to the Malaysian people. Now, the other thing I think all Malaysians must learn, and I address this now to all leaders of AMNO, without exception, all leaders on the opposite side, across the divide. How did the American people behave? They followed the appeal of Steve Biznik. There were two very big rivals fighting for the soul of the American Republic. There were two coups, a bit normal truth. But he said, we must not destroy the Republic. We must not enter into civil war and tear the country into pieces and give due warning to the Clinton faction. And he said so. Since, in fact, the coup, he said, started way back when Bill Clinton won the presidency in 1993, backed by drug money, CIA organized and financed drugs from the MENA airport. Since that time, Clinton and a bunch of neocons that time under the radar and neocons have a bad name actually, wrongly labeled neoconservative. No! If you go to the history of every neocon member, Wolf of Fitz and all, all that whole bunch, crystal, Irving crystals, they were all communists. They followed Trotsky. And when Trotsky was expelled from Russia by Stalin and lived in South America, they followed him. They were Trotskites, hardcore communists, turned to Rook, and then infiltrated the American political system as neocons, as the label to hide the insidious Trotskites, okay, DNA. If you don't know that, that shows how silly, how shallow, how inadequate you are as the leader. They had therefore more than 24 years of control, corruption, and continuous wars in the Middle East. And Steve Pesinic says 911 was an inside job in collaboration with the Wahhabis. So the Steve Pacific faction told the other faction, stand down. We have more than 24 years to run this country, to solve the problems, but instead, you bankrupt the nation, you destroy the republic, and bring America on the verge of collapse with 21 trillion in debts. The message was, you piss off. We will take over, solve our country's problem, repair our reputation, and follow the true policies of the founders of America. If not, there will be a price to be paid. And he gave a warning. There must be a peaceful transition of power. Do not destroy the Republic. Do not throw the baby together with a bathtub of water, dirty water. 
Likewise, may I appeal to each and every leader of this country. Malaysia cannot be ransomed or prostituted to any foreign power, be it US or China or any country. Our country is not for sale, for money or for protection for any other reasons. We stand neutral to our policy of neutrality and that we be part of a zone of peace and neutrality. We are friends to all enemies to none. Do not content and put our country at risk to be destroyed, subverted by condemning powers. So if we are going to contest and contend, let's do so maturely. And I hope everyone across the entire political divide, I don't care now where you come from, your colour, your political badge, your religion. Today, I stand before you as an individual, an independent individual with my own voice. And I will critique anyone that takes a stand, a policy or politics that will subvert our country's sovereignty subvert our country to global finance and banking and subvert our integrity our morality to demon religious trash no I paid a price already arrested charged in prison under SOSMA for speaking out I do so willingly. I'm not afraid. Let me tell my enemies. Why are you so afraid to do that against me? Have I ever committed violence? Revolution? Or coup d'etat? Even after I've been temporarily released on bail, I fought you. I argued with you. I debated with you on issues of substance on policies and principles. But so let me warn you all, that both sides of the divide cannot win arguments based on sound research, sound analysis, cogent evidence, but to resort to tugs like the red shirt, and now supported by Kyrie, a supposed intellectual. That shows how low to the gutter level we have set to. But there was a saving grace. Some Amno leaders have condemned and disassociated with the red shirts. And it's my hope that leaders on the other side will also wake up and examine their policies and not create another organization or strategy to perpetuate the current broken system. We are broken, we've been hollowed out, we're in decay. So for heaven's sake, where is the I don't support Trump or Clinton, either one. But I'm a student of history. And I'm a student of current affairs. And I'm desperate to learn how a miracle happened in USA on November 8th. An outsider, 1,000 to 1, took the country by the storm. You think it's easy to win the US election against all the Jewish money, the Zionist monies, and trench vested interests? And you dare condemn him? Rather say, Wow, maybe we can learn something from him. Both sides huh, of the divide. And how can we save the nation? And some says, oh, he will not perform or fulfill his pledges. 
let me say to you, go and watch one of his speeches. Go and watch one of his speeches. He's the only leader to today who dare condemn openly, vividly, coherently the entire global fashion elite, the war party, the corruption, the scam that's taking place throughout the world. And he said, I'm standing against all of them, knowing there is a difficult battle. He may even lose. Knowing those were the forces arraying against him, he stood firm. And what was most telling, a few days before November the 8th, with a group of supporters and friends, they prayed for deliverance. They prayed to God Almighty for guidance and for support. That's very telling them. Condemn him so easily. He's a sinner. Oh, you're not a sinner. You're a virgin. You're an angel. Did he say he's not, he's not flawed? Did he say he's a virgin? He's not committed sins. If you're not committed sins, give me a press statement that you're the virgin angel. Whatever his flaws, we have all have flaws. At least he has the audacity, the courage to step forward, put his fortune, business, family at risk. There was a attack on his life. You idiot! To fight for what is belief. That much I give him credit. And to me, history one day will judge him. The speech he made against the global elites, the petty elites, the metric complex, will be judged one day as a turning point of the 21st century. That speech will rank as historic as a farewell address of the George Washington. With that, I will conclude here today in the hope all of you, especially the policy makers, shifters, and leaders of both sides of the divide, please have the humility to re examine what you have done, what you tend to do, and examine thoroughly. Okay, whether the path you are leading us is correct. That reminds me of a story. A lawyer appeared before the House of Lords and other strange arguments inquired from the House of Lords. Me Lords, are you following me? And the Lord Lords, in perfect eloquence and Queen's English replied, Council, we are following you. But where are you taking us? Likewise, I pose this question to all leaders across the entire divide. You have spoken a lot, condemn a lot. And we follow what you are saying. But where are you taking us? The simple folks the right of Malaysia, where is the destination? Because as far as we are concerned, as far as I am concerned, I have surrendered completely to the will of God Almighty. I have absolute faith that He will protect us, defend us, and guide us under all circumstances in the face of all enemies and adversities. And by our prayers, a miracle took place on November 8th, 2016. And today, every major global media are shocked and ask the question, how could it happen? How did the polls got it so wrong? Well, they got it wrong, didn't they? In Brexit. Yet they never learned from the experience. Likewise, the leaders of our country had not learned from the experts of Brexit. And when this campaign came about, they stuck to the same old trash, shallow thinking, tired thinking, never pause to analyze, to meditate, to contemplate, to self-examine 
themselves. Driven, most of them, by lust of power. With that, I seek your indulgence and your patience that this is a rather long address, but it has to be because it involves complicated issues. I thank you for your attention, your patience, and I hope you will share this video address to as many people as possible, especially to the leaders of both sides of the political divide. Thank you and God bless you.